Hey there, how's it going? Great to see you. Today we're going to be having a look at the Yolo Box Pro and the new software released version 3.0.0. I'm not going to have a look at the entire Yolo Box suite of functionality because that would just be a huge video. What I am going to look at today are the new features in 300 so that we can have a quick look, see what they are, and add them to the knowledge we've already got. If you're interested in a full new cover video, let me know in the comments down below and I will go ahead and make one of those for you. Definitely will, keen on that. Okay, let's have a look and see what we've got in this new version. The first thing is the video cropping. That's something that's completely brand new to this, which changes the way the uh, green screening works a little bit as well. I'll show you that shortly. We've got the ability to name and lock your graphic overlays, which is really interesting and really cool and gives some great new possibilities. There's live stream settings, which are all now saved when you back out of a live stream instead of having to re-add things in. Also, video sources can be duplicated. Video and GIF backgrounds are available for the multi-views now, which is something everybody's been after for a while. And you can now view comments from all of the platforms you're streaming to in one tab. You can also separate them out. We'll have a look at how that works as well. There's a few more bits and pieces that we'll cover while we're in here, but those are the main points. So let's get on with this and start by having a look at the video cropping, because that's really cool. So here's my Yellow Box Pro. I'm just going to start by creating a live stream event here. I'll just call it test because um, not feeling very imaginative. You know how that goes. This is how quick it is just to set a, um, a live stream up. And I'll tap on here to open up the live stream. And here we go. Now I've got two cameras that I've got set up here. One's with a couple of um, role playing figures sitting in front of a, a green screen. And the other one I've got is just me sitting here talking to an extra camera. I've got these both hooked up into the yellow box here. We're going to add some other video sources later, but we'll get into that when we get there. The first thing I wanted to have a look at was cropping. So what we can do is just uh, click on this little button at the top of the thing here, which used to be where we would go in and um, just do the green screening. Now it takes you into a palette which has got two tabs on it. The first one here is the chroma keying. I'll get back to that in a minute. The second one here is cropping. I'll just click on cropping here and have a look and see what we've got now as you can see it brings up a default crop box which is about 50 percent of the screen size and by default it's using the 16 by 9 ratio you can also crop it so that it goes to a 9 by 16 tool screen ratio and you can just drag that around as you used to with objects on the yellow box and i can blow that up a wee bit like that and if this is all i want because i just want to talk here and this little bit then that's fine i can go ahead and save that as a new video source which is cropped like this and there you go we've just got that one sitting there so uh, that's created a new video source based on that one cropped down the other thing you can do with this is use it for zooming i'll just trash that one because i'm not going to need it again i'll click on that again we'll go back to cropping and i'm just going to scale that a little bit just a, a little bit bigger than that and um, i'm just going to put that on my face there and I'm going to hit this fit to screen thing what that's going to do now is give me a new zoomed in version of this so I might be talking to you on this screen here and then next thing you know I can just tap on this one and it gives me a zoomed in with um, you might just want to do that to cut to emphasize the point and just have that that zoom in feature available and then click again to, to zoom out Excellent. So that's what you can do with the video cropping at a really high level. And you can use those in multi sources and overlays and things like that afterwards. Okay, so I'll just uh, get rid of that one now. We don't need that one anymore. I was just going to show you the green screening as well. So I'll just click on this one here. This is a, a picture I've got set up behind me here. And I can just tap on that there, which will bring up the chroma keying. I can turn on the keying. As you can see, it pulls a pretty neat key just straight away without any effort. If you need to adjust the key or anything, so at the moment it's 680 of the two values that we've got here. Um, it pulls that key pretty much straight away. And um, personally, I've never had much of a need to adjust it. Um, if I was using a blue screen, of course, I could choose that here. But um, you can just adjust the similarity here if you want to. If it's not quite pulling a clean key, you can move that up and down and things. And what this does here now is it actually gives you this number and the ability to fine adjust it. So 
you can just see numerically exactly what this key was set to which was 600 and then also the smoothness of the key you can change as well um, once again it just lets you finally adjust that number on the side there so that you can get it exact if you want to repeat it for another shot or something later on just gives you a little bit more information a little bit more ability to control it well as a, you've always been able to done i can just come in and pick a background image for my key there and i can just put that in the background there perfect and um there we go oh you can also scale the video source i don't know if you've seen this before so that i can basically scale that down and move that around on the screen or bring it back up to full size the next thing is being able to name and lock your video overlays so let's have a look at the naming of them first i'll start by creating an overlay so the first thing i'll do here is click on the overlays button and create a new overlay i'm just going to grab a um a, i'll just make a title overlay because that's an easy one at first i'll just choose that one i'm not going to bother editing it and i will just come up here and you can see there's this new item at the top called overlay name so what i might want to do in there is just enter a name and i'm just going to call it main title main e and there we go so that's called main title and i can save that as you can see that name comes up here now that's really good because if you've got a whole pile of little overlay buttons and things in here and you can end up with quite a few of them in a project it's really easy just to see what they are especially with the small thumbnails on the screen and you might have quite a few of them and the title just makes it easier and faster for you to identify them so that you can hit them turn your main title on turn your main title off and um, bob's your auntie now with the overlays here um, if you had something like this one here and i always wanted to put a graphic screen over it so a border or something okay i'm just going to create another overlay here and i'm going to grab one of these image overlays that i've got with a transparent background um which is uh, so i'll just grab this one here it's it's really nasty but i'll use it anyway and i'm just going to grab that and i want to scale that up so it goes all around me here because uh I just feel like being all Christmassy perhaps and I'm going to give that one a name as well and I'll just call that um, Xmas border and click done there we go so now I've got that Christmas border and what I can do now is turn that on and if I hold my finger down on here I can hit that lock button there now what that will do is it will mean that that border stays locked on to that piece of video if i now switch over to another video source the border disappears because i've got that locked on when i come back to hdmi 2 that border is going to come back and that's what the locking does okay let's have a look now at the video sources and how they are saved when you move away from a live stream and come back to it i'll show you how that works now okay so here's our live stream we've got some video sources set up i might also just create say a um a side by side video source here as well so i'll just pick that one and that one and there we go we've got a a new side by side video source I'll turn that there off okay so we've got that side by side source as an extra what I can do now is uh, click this button here which moves away now you might remember in the past when you went back away from here and click done because you're leaving that stream then it was all over and done with and you couldn't go back into it without having to recreate all of those video sources that you had now when you moved away from a video source in the past you couldn't go back into it without having to recreate all those video sources and settings that you don't have to do anymore because they're all saved so you can see here if i click on this again and i come back into it then my side by side is here if we have a look here my overlays still exist i don't have to create recreate any of these things if i click on the epsilon button up on the top here and hit duplicate and i'll just call that test copy which is great because if you want to repeat the live stream or do another live stream with the same settings and overlays and titles and graphics and everything you can do that now hit create the second one will come up which is test copy i can click on that one there now and that also has everything already set up so i don't have to go through the pain of recreating all the titles and everything and the title is there my overlay is there all of that neat stuff 
so you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you do another episode. You can just keep that base one on there, just keep a master one there, duplicate it each time, update the title, might be episode one, episode two, episode three, something like that, and that's all there and ready to go for you. Awesome. Okay, the next cool thing I want to have a look at is video and GIF backgrounds for multi-views. Now, when we had a multi-view before, we were able to put a static image in the background of it. Now you can put an animated GIF or a video in the background. So you could have like a video loop or something if you've got, say, some cool clouds rushing past that you want in the background, if that's the sort of thing you want, or a, a video of some fire burning, or maybe just a WYSI graphic key animated GIF that makes you look like a professional TV studio, that sort of thing let's have a look and see how that works so here we are i've got my side by side that we created before i can just use that one i can hold my finger down on here and click the edit button to go into it you can see what we've got in here is a scale slider so obviously this sort of starts at full size and you can zoom it down to a bit lower or you can blow it up so that you've got that mix of a 16 by 9 and reduce size uh, image on the other side but what I'll do is I'm just going to scale them down a little bit so you've got some gap behind them they've given us a few different sample backgrounds here we can just uh, click on one of these these are static uh, image backgrounds a nice little simple gradients or whatever and there's also this uh, animated one here which has got eight seconds loop time on it so as you can see that there's just running an eight second loop there's not a lot to it, it just looks a, a little bit more exciting than your average Joe blog nothing happening um, you can also click on this plus button here and add something of your own so I've got this neat little squiggly um, digital line gif thing down here so I'm going to choose that one and put that in the background here and there you go now I've got my squiggly lines going around I can uh, reduce the size of the borders or get rid of them entirely if I wanted to or thicken them up all these things uh, change the color of them i can swap the video over so that the left and right hand ones are around the other way so that if you wanted to scale that up at all then that would work doing doing that sort of thing and um yeah there you go just a, a few different things that you can do that make the whole thing a little bit more exciting i also notice that if one of your video sources is transparent then the background here fills them behind it as well so that transparency carries through the layers that's an interesting thing i don't know if it's intended or not but there you have it you might be able to make use of it or you might not now if you're multi-streaming out to multiple different platforms you're usually going to get comments coming in from all those different platforms and there are different tabs now i don't have a live stream going at the moment but if i click here there's no comments here, but normally what you would see is multiple tabs for the different um, destinations that you're streaming to. So you might have your um, Twitch one and your YouTube one, for example, and they'd be in different tabs. Now you can have all of that into a single tab, so all of your stuff's coming up in just one place. That makes it a lot easier to see what all of your viewers are saying, not just the viewers on a single platform. Obviously, that's pretty cool. Now I did say there were a couple of other really cool features on here. One is the ability to loop or not loop local videos. So let's just create a new video source. I'm going to use this um, alpaca video that I've got because it's a bit quirky. Now in here, if you just play that, it's just going to go from end to end. What you can do now is come to settings and choose um, local video play mode and you can tell it to either continue looping so when it gets to the end it'll keep going or just to stop at the last frame so that just gives you a little bit more option for how the yellow box handles local videos if i want to create another video source for example one of the different layouts like the news layout i can choose to have the alpaca on one side and me on the other side and you can change the border thickness on these now and the border color which we couldn't do before so if you want to you can make that a really thick border or get rid of the border entirely and uh, change the color of it to anything in the palette here or a custom color if you want to just like that and um, obviously have the video swap out the video swap that we saw before as well and all of that stuff so it's just a little bit more uh, manipulation that you can do with these things to make it stand out and personalize it so there's all of the awesome features of the yellow box pro that have been added into version 3 now if you want to see all of the features of the yellow box pro 
absolutely everything and also you're a new user instead of an upgrade user i'm going to create a video just for you really really soon so make sure you click down here to subscribe so you don't miss out on that in the meantime here's a couple of other videos that you'll be interested in do go and watch those they're pretty awesome and i'll see you in another video really soon thanks for hanging around don't forget to put any comments or questions in the comment section down below and all of these other buttons bye